Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Felicia from Sweet Georgia and we are going to talk all about weaving today. In one of my previous videos, I talked about how there's lots of things on the loom that I couldn't necessarily share. And today I'm going to tell you about all of those things. And they are all here in this massive binder. So as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, I am all about right now working on projects that are going to go towards the Guild of Canadian Weavers Master's Program. So I'm trying to learn all the skills and techniques, create all the samples so that I can weave the things that I need to weave in order to submit to the Guild of Canadian Weavers Program. Now I was talking about this together with Rachel Smith from Welford Pearls. You might know her as Woolen Spinning on YouTube as well. You can find her channel here as well. And she was telling me about how she was starting the Ontario Hand Weavers and Spinners Program. And so they have a weaving program through the Ontario Guild. Um, that's kind of like a step-by-step, module-by-module testing program as well. It's not just a testing program, but it's also a learning program and a testing program. So she told me that she was going to go do it. She was going to do unit one, which is all about basic weave structures, and that is basically how to weave plain weave, how to weave twills, uh, learning about drawdowns, all of those kinds of things. And so she said she was going to do it, she was working on it, and she was going to submit, and um, sort of wondered if I might want to participate with her. And so I did, I said yes. So on top of all of the other things that I was weaving and working on, I decided to go down this path of the Unit 1 OHS, Ontario Hand Weavers and Spinners weaving program. And all of that is in this binder here right now. The program basically requires you to learn about set, learn about wool, how to dress your loom. You should know all these things before you start the program. Um, and then from there, you learn about drawdowns, you learn about how to weave plain weave, how to get a balanced set, how to measure your work on the loom, off the loom, and after finishing, all of those kinds of things. And then also learning about a number of different kinds of twills. Now, in order to submit your work for marking or for adjudication, I guess, um, you have to do 14 samples that are the basic samples. These are basic twill samples that you have to submit. And then on top of that, you have to create three new original uh, weave structures. And then out of those three weave structures that you have then created, then you have to design your own project, a hand woven project. Um, and so I'll show you all of the things that I have created. Now, in order to weave the first 14 samples, or actually the first 17 samples, uh, you have to do it on a warp that they have specified. It specifies the number of ends, specifies the threading, and specifies what colors you should be using. So basically the idea is that they want to see you using um, a number of different primary colors. So either blue, red, and yellow, or cyan, magenta, and yellow. And then when you interlace your weft colors in there, you're using other colors or other hues from the color wheel. And so with seeing those interlacements, you're seeing how color affects each one of these primary colors. So this is kind of the leftover of one of the warps that I had wound in order to do those basic samples. Uh, it's, you can see it's just a little bit leftover. Basically what I did was I wound a seven yard warp to begin with, and then I wove all of these basic samples, cut them off the loom, washed them, tested them, all sorts of things like that. But you can see that there's, there's a number of uh, samples here that I've basically cut off the loom. These are my discards. I have a whole pile of submissions that I, I can't submit because they either have errors in them or they're not a balanced weave structure. Like in this case, this one looks pretty nice from this side. Looks so, so okay on this side, but you can see there's an error right here. You can see it better here. So that is a treadling error that causes the back side of this sample to look completely wrong. And so this one I had to redo. So with the initial seven yard warp that I put onto the loom, I wove off all these samples and then checked all the samples and there were samples that I didn't like, samples that didn't work out. And so I had to cull all of the ones that were bad. And because I had run out of warp, I had to wind a second warp. So I wound a second warp that was four yards and then I wove the replacement samples. And so when I finally got down to it, I was like, okay, I can't keep weaving replacement samples. I'll just have to go with what I have so far. And so I cut the rest of this off of the loom and started my project. Now, along with weaving all of these samples, there needs to be a way to 
present the samples. And so that is what this whole binder situation is about. So you can see here, this is kind of what my binder is looking like, but there's one side with a file folder that I've cut a window out of, and then that's my sample that is sewn into the paper there. And then on the other side, there is a page where I have to talk about what weft I used, what the picks per inch were, what the ends per inch were, all of the measurements about this particular sample. And then I also have to do a hand-drawn drawdown for each weave structure. So I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out what kind of a template I should create in order to do all my drawdowns, in order to preserve all this information. But I basically settled on this sort of a format. It's on a letter size page. Um, but basically in the corner here, I have to do a hand-drawn drawdown where I draw out the threading pattern for each one of these different sections. I draw out the tie-up and I draw out the treadling diagram. And then they all have color bars to indicate what color I was using for weft and for warp in all of these instances. And then I have to do the actual drawdown of each section. This has been one of the most time-consuming parts of this entire project. However, I think it has been very, very, very helpful because it's just become so ingrained in me now to know how these weave drawdowns work, how these weaving drafts work. And so it was through this practice that um, I started to do this for other projects that I was working on. And that is how I discovered that I made a massive mistake in treadling my Wall of Troy runner pattern in, in, a, in a previous episode. So it was only through this practice of learning how to do the drawdowns by hand and not just knowing how it works, but actually doing it and doing it for 17, almost well, I'm gonna be doing 18, 18 drawdowns for this particular unit submission. So I have developed a little bit of a system around how I make these drawdowns. I basically draw all the threading in and then I draw the tie-up, then I draw the treadling. And then I go across line by line and I'm looking to see which shafts are raised. And the shafts that are raised, I use a tiny little marker. I use this marker, the Sharpie pen, and I just do a little dot in that section. Um, rather than coloring in that box, it wasn't efficient for me to like color in box by box by box. And so what I would do is I would just go across each row, each pick, and I would mark with a dot all of the parts where the warp was raised up. And then I would go and do the entire picture. So here you can see this is my plain weave sample. And up here in this spot, I only have dots so far because I haven't actually colored in any of those dots. So once I have all of the dots set up on my, on my drawdown, then I go through and again, using the Sharpie pen, I outline all of those squares. And then <laughs> going through with a different pen, this one is slightly thicker pen, then I go through and I color in all of the boxes to make them black and nice and pretty. Um, but yeah, this is a system that I've developed over a long period of making many, many mistakes because the drawdowns take so long and you don't want to make a mistake. And I was feeling extremely anxious about all the, uh, all of the coloring and making sure that I was not coloring in the wrong boxes. So just by doing a dot, if I make a mistake, I actually got myself one of those uh, whiteout pens, the little pens that just do a drop of whiteout. And so if I make a mistake with one of the dots then I just white it out and then I just keep going. So that has been a big part of this submission is learning how to do the drawdowns by hand, coloring them in, developing a system, developing a template for my work for documentation. And then the other habit that's become fully ingrained in me is this idea of taking measurements on the loom, off the loom, and after washing. So taking measurements, not just of the length and the width, but also tracking what your picks per inch are, what your ends per inch are for all of these situations, because your ends per inch and your picks per inch will change uh, after washing. And in some cases, with some of the weave structures, the weft yarns will pack closer together after washing, and so you'll end up with more picks per inch than you had imagined. And so when you go back and you weave those, you might have to weave them uh, looser so that way when they wet finish, then they shrink and then the number of picks per inch matches the number of ends per inch. This is where, this is where I spent a lot of time. In any case, my five-year-old daughter, she spent a lot of time sitting with me as I was coloring in these drawdowns. And so she wanted to do them as well. And so I set up a little leftover page for her to do as well. And she just basically, uh, 
creates her own pattern for the treadling and the threading. And what I do is I just mark where the dots are and then she goes and she colors in those squares. So that is the binder. It's a major component of this submission. It is to contain the 17 samples, the woven samples, the drawdowns, uh, all of the weft specifications for each. I have to write up a little bit of stuff about each one. I have to write up an introduction, a conclusion. I have to write some observations, those kinds of things. So the next part of the submission is the project. This is a project that you design using inspiration from one of the original weave samples that you've created. And so that one doesn't need to use the same primary colors as the weft, but it does need to use colors from around the color wheel. So this is the project that I created for that um, project submission. And so this is the fabric that is going to be used to create a pillow. And I have these old pillows at home that are just ugly. And so I was going to just take this fabric and I'm going to sew it over top of it. <laughs> I'm going to sew it over top and make myself a pillow with these. And so the pillows will then go into my office at the studio because I need some nice pillows. And uh, yeah, I'm quite enjoying this. I, I quite like this. So that pillow needs to be sewn today. I need to finish some drawdowns and then write my conclusion. And then I'm going to send this whole submission into the mail in a few days uh, for marking. Yeah. So it's taken many, many hours to weave all of these samples, to do all the documentation, to create all the designs. This is where in the evenings I've been using that I Weave It program on the iPad to just tap, tap, tap and create new different weave structures wherever I can. And it's just been many, many, many hours of practice is what it is. And um, having these habits ingrained in me, like documentation and being mindful of picks per inch and balance cloth and all of these kinds of things, I feel like this whole program has been helpful in those ways of creating some discipline around weaving. So it's not just, oh, I love this project or I love these colors and I want to make a thing. And you can easily make a thing, but it's when you have to sit down and document and become really systematic, become really disciplined about how you keep track of things. The one thing that I would like to do in the future is keep better track of how many hours it's taken me to put together this submission. I know that in order to do um, five of the drawdowns, it took me two hours just sitting there and coloring in these boxes. It's a long time to make these drawdowns, especially when you make mistakes and you have to do them over again. <laughs> So in any case, now you can see the loom here, the Luet Spring Loom. This is all free. It is unoccupied. The project has been cut off the loom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave another twill gamp for the GCW submission. So you can see here, this is actually, I went to the studio last night and I finished weaving off the twill gamp that was on the Mira. So you can see that is the twill gamp as part of the weaving study group that I'm doing for the School of Sweet Georgia. So that's come off the loom, hasn't been washed yet. I've just measured it. But after that whole section, I sort of started to play with a lot of the different colors that I have in the studio for this particular yarn and just dropping some different samples in to see what it all looks like, to pick a color that I really, really like in order to finally make a garment out of that. And so I'm thinking this is my color. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna weave yardage at the studio based on what I've discovered out of this gamp and then this loom is gonna go weave another twill gamp for the GCW, and that one is gonna be made out of bamboo. So many things happening on many looms right now. So that is basically it. I just wanted to show you my OHS binder before I put it in the mail. Fingers crossed it doesn't get lost in the mail. If you've ever been curious about the OHS weaving program, I'm happy to answer questions about my experience of what I've done, uh, but everyone's experience may be different. And they are constantly updating this particular program and this particular unit. So the things that I've done or the samples that I've shown or the binder template that I've created may or may not work for uh, future updates of this particular program. So I wouldn't use my binder as a sample for what you might do if you were gonna do the program. You really have to follow the guidelines. There's a lot of um, criteria, there's a lot of requirements for each one of these units. And so you just have to follow their instructions exactly. <laughs> so I'm really curious to see if anybody has done the OHS program. I know many weavers have gone through all of these units and are working on multiple units. I think altogether there's 14 different units. There's a unit on like double weave, there's a unit on color and design, there's a unit on 
lace weaves and rug weaving and tapestry. And so if you check all of these off, then you're moving stepwise towards an end goal. And that is basically it for today. I hope that you guys will join us again on this channel to talk about all things to do with the fiber arts, whether it's knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. We come here on Wednesdays to talk about weaving. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.